Although I was a little nervous and was surrounded by native Spanish speakers in a Spanish church, I decided to speak a little during a church service. I want to share with you more about that experience as well as share more highlights from the 14 or so times I went to a Spanish church from June 6th to August 15th, 2018. My name is Franklin and this is FirstThousandHours.com. Don't give up on your language learning marathon. You can make it. You can make it. Through your first thousand hours. Before I went to the Spanish church for the third consecutive time in June 2018, I read an article by Polygot Steve Kaufman called Learning a Language Means Making Mistakes. In that article, he said this, Each time you make a mistake in writing or speaking or are aware that you didn't use the language as well as you would have liked, is an opportunity to improve. It means you are noticing aspects of the language. You don't have to get everything right, but you need to focus on noticing how the language works. You might get something right one time and get it wrong the next time. That is all good. You may now start noticing these things when you listen and read. As long as you are trying to notice the language and not allowing yourself to get upset over mistakes, you will improve. The mistakes will correct themselves eventually with enough exposure, but only when your brain is ready. In the back of my mind, I knew that I wanted to share something I was thankful to God for during the prayer and testimony time at this church. However, I was a little afraid to do so because I felt a little intimidated to speak because I was with people that really knew Spanish. I knew my mistakes would be evident to all from the time I would start speaking, but this is what I wrote on June 20th, 2018, about my time at the Spanish church that day. I thought to myself that if I went back to the Spanish church, I needed to participate in the portion of prayer meeting where people give their prayer and praises. During the past two Wednesdays, I've been a little fearful of doing so. I was still a little afraid of doing so today. I'm still not a perfect Spanish speaker, and I have a long way to go. However, in that article by Steve Kaufman, I was reminded to speak and seek to continually improve. I can't let the fear of speaking stop me from speaking. My praise was that I like Spanish and I was very happy to learn more Spanish and listen to things about the Lord at the same time. What really encouraged me to give that testimony at the Spanish church was something as well from Steve Kaufman's article where he said that mistakes are just opportunities to improve. On July 4th, 2018, I spoke during the prayer and testimony time at the Spanish church. Here's what I said the next day about that experience. When it was time for prayer and praise, I asked for a prayer request for the 13 people that are trapped in the cave in Thailand. I didn't know exactly how to say everything. So basically for the prayer request time, I said that we need to pray for 13 people in a cave. I didn't even know how to say cave properly, but people helped me to know how to say it. I forgot how to say it now, but they helped me. And the person who was leading out didn't know about the news story about the 13 people who are trapped in a cave in Thailand. So she asked some questions about that, and people were able to explain in more detail um, what my prayer request was about. But I was very simple in what I said, but I still could convey my thoughts. The great thing about language is though it is very complex, it still can be broken down into small parts so that people can understand us even if we don't know all the words we want to say in our target language. On July 7th, 2018, I went to a youth service at the Spanish church and I participated in an unexpected activity. I thought I was only going to be listening to others, but this is what I said about the activity the following day. One of the activities that they had um, for everyone to do was to gather into five groups. And so I I went in one of these groups, and we had a random activity to do. And our activity was to go up front in the church and welcome everyone. So we did that individually. And so I I spoke in Spanish, (laughs) just a little bit of Spanish, but I I said something. And I was able to talk uh, with the group in Spanish as well as we were trying to decide um, how we would go about doing things. I didn't understand everything that people were saying, but um, I was able to um, still interact in the conversation to the point where they didn't speak to me, me in English, and I just 
kind of repeated back what I thought um, we were supposed to do in, in Spanish. And so that was a good thing. For me, when I listen to things in Spanish, my goal is to understand the context of what is being said instead of understanding every single word. And I want to talk more about that in a future podcast. Understanding the context helped me to continue to speak with people in Spanish that day, although I believe that probably all of the group members could have spoken to me in English if needed. However, one reason I was at the Spanish church was to be in an all Spanish environment, so I didn't have the desire to speak in English while being there. My listening comprehension definitely fluctuated during the 14 or so times I went to the Spanish church from June 6 to August 15, 2018. I went to the Spanish church on July 21, 2018. Here's what I said about my listening comprehension the next day. I am happy to report that I understood around 40 to 50 percent of what two speakers were saying at that Spanish church. That marked my 10th time going to that Spanish church. Now, when a video was played, I really didn't understand that much. My mind kind of zoned out and also I couldn't really hear the best that video. And so I think that also um, uh, hindered me from understanding as much. Um, I like to hear clear audio as much as possible, and it was a little bit muffled or it was a little low for me, but when I could hear real live people speaking and the volume was adequate for me, um, I understood around 40 to 50 percent. I thought to myself that understanding what other people say is much harder than speaking because even if I struggle with speaking, I know what I want to say. In order to understand what other people say, it requires me to spend much more time reading and listening to Spanish to be prepared for real live conversations. I've thought that I would much rather prefer to speak a few words in Spanish but understand what others are saying over knowing how to say a few words perfectly in Spanish but not understanding what people are saying. Of course, I want to speak Spanish well, but understanding others has been a higher priority for me. On August 15, 2018, I had a conversation with someone at church. I'm going to play an audio clip of me recounting that experience the next day. Yesterday, I went to the Spanish church and I did something I hadn't done before. I mentioned something in Spanish about the sermon to someone else. And because I didn't use the, you know, very common phrases uh, only, like mucho gusto, which means nice to meet you, or Dios te bendiga, which means God bless you, or something like that. And I said something a little bit more meaningful that opened up a little window of a conversation. And the person started talking to me about what he thought about Christian life for about three minutes. So that meant I had to understand what he was saying. And I understood probably about 90% of what he was saying, but I had to have somewhat of a trained ear because I wasn't the one that was really um, speaking a lot in that conversation, but I had to be able to understand what he was saying. And I didn't understand everything that the sermon was speaking about, but I did remember a promise of, of how God would be with us our God, God would be with Jeremiah specifically. And I mentioned that to him and that, that was cool how that opened up um, a deeper conversation. Being able to understand most of what someone else was saying to me was a milestone that I'm very happy about because I've come so far from where I started. I also recognize that if I were to analyze only a few events in my language learning journey, some might look like I'm making progress and some might look like I'm not making any progress at all. But the main thing is that I've decided to continue in my Spanish language learning marathon during my first thousand hours. I believe that the culmination of my interactions with Spanish will pay off in time by God's grace. My name is Franklin and this is FirstThousandHours.com. Don't give up on your language learning marathon. You can make it. You can make it. Through your first thousand hours.